Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this video tutorial series on implementing JWT refresh tokens in your existing Angular 7 and ASP.NET Core application. In the last video tutorial, we finished coding the create access token method, and in this video tutorial, we will code the refresh token method. Since we all know if you have watched the previous video tutorial that whenever the request comes in for login, the GAN type will be password. But if the user is already logged in and requesting to view a particular component like products and the user's JWT token is expired, then instead of sending the user a unauthorized request and logging them out, we will refresh the token and replace the JWT token in the user's browser. So to do that, we have to write the logic inside this method refresh token. So first thing that we want to do is here we are going to create a try catch block. We have not used a try catch block in the create access token method, but if you wish to, you can go ahead and add a try catch block. I wanted to use try catch block here to show you that we can also use try catch block and catch any errors and throw the errors or send the errors back to the client. So inside the try catch block, first thing that we want to do is when the method is called, the token request model object will be passed to the parameter. And inside the token request model, we have a property called as refresh token. So which means that we are going to receive a refresh token. We have to check if that refresh token exists in our database. Since if the user has already logged in, that means we issued a JWT token and a refresh token to that logged in user. So we want to check that the received refresh token in this request matches the refresh token in our database. So let's go ahead and first go and get the old refresh token from the database. So here, what we want to do is we want to create a variable. I have called this as RT, which means refresh token. Now, what I'm doing using my database object, I am calling the tokens entity and then getting the first or default value of the refresh token. So now when I am getting the refresh token from the database, I am checking if the client ID of that refresh token matches the client ID which is in my app settings.json file and as we all know as per the previous video tutorial we have set the client ID to be this in our app settings.json file so if this matches the refresh tokens client ID in the database then that means that the token was issued by our application we will also check the value of the refresh token itself matches the value of the received token in this request. So two conditions need to be satisfied here. First, this refresh token that we received matches the refresh token in our database. Second, the client ID that was stored in the database when the token was issued also matches the client ID in our app settings.json file. This client ID was not sent to the user. Only the token value was sent when the user logged in. So this we have to validate with our database value. Next thing that we want to do inside the try catch block is to check the result of this RT object to check if the result is null. If the result is null, which means there is no refresh token in our database. Therefore, we are going to send a unauthorized result, HTTP result back to the user. So let's do that. So here I'm going to set a if condition. And here I'm going to say if the value of this refresh token is null, then I'm going to send an unauthorized result back to the user. Now we have to check if the value is not null, which means there is a value that is received from the database. And if that value of that refresh token is not expired, so we want to make sure that the refresh token that we are receiving here is also valid and it's not expired. If that refresh token is expired, 
then again we are going to send an unauthorized result we need to receive a valid request valid refresh token in order to issue a new refresh token if we receive an expired refresh token we will not issue a new refresh token so let's set the condition over here so another if condition which will check if the refresh token is expired we will call the expire time property on our refresh token and then check if this value of expire time is less than the value of the current date time which means that if it is less than if the expire time is less than the current date time that means the token is already expired if the expire time is greater than the current date and time that means the token is still valid so now in this case it's not valid so we are returning an unauthorized result next thing that we want to check if there's a user with a refresh token with that user id so we know that we receive a value here so that value now we are going to check if it belongs to a user with the user id so to get the user id inside the token request model we have been provided with the username of the user who's requesting this refresh token so using that username we will first get the user id from the database for that user so let's do that so here so we will create an object called as user using the find by id async method on our user manager object we will pass the user id of the rt object so our rt object comes from the database and and if we go to our database and go to the tokens table and here inside the tokens table we have a column called as user id which will store the user id of the user who to whom the token was issued so we are checking if the user id we are going to get the user by the following user id and store it in this variable called as user now we are going to check if the value we received is equal to null if it is equal to null which means there was no user found if it's null there was no user found in the database table therefore once again we will send a return unauthorized result back to the client so let's do that so now after we have checked if the value is null and we have responded appropriately the next thing that we want to do is we know that if the value is not equal to null then we are going to receive a user that means there is a user with the id if it's not null so now that user exists therefore we will send the refresh token to the user so we will generate a new refresh token and then send this to the user so let's call this as variable rt new which means it's a new refresh token and we will call this method here that we created which is responsible to create a refresh token so what we will do here is call this method which is going to return a new refresh token and when we are create, calling this method we have to pass the client id and the user id so the client id comes from the app settings dot uh, json file but in this case the client id we are going to issue the same client id so we will call the rt dot client id so if you see there is a client id field here because if the user existed there should be a user id there should also be a client id and we are using that same client id and passing it to the parameter and then the next value that we want to send is the user id so rt dot user id both these values are coming from this object here so now this object here holds the new value what we want to do is 
we have created a new refresh token now we have to delete the old token and then replace the old token with the new refresh token so the database is updated and the database has the current value of the new refresh token so let's do that so what we will do is first we will invalidate the old refresh token by deleting it so we will use the remove method on our token entity and pass the token that we want to delete which is the rt token object then we want to do is we want to add this new token to our database and then finally call the save changes method so that the changes persist in our database after we have saved the new token new refresh token in our database when we are sending the response back to the client we also need to send the jwt token as well so let's go ahead and create a new jwt token and to do that we are going to call the create access token method so we have already written a method called as create access token which is responsible for creating jwt token so all we want to do is create a variable here call it response and we want to then call the create access token method and when we are calling this method we need to pass the application user object as the parameter and the refresh token string so the refresh token value as we all know comes from this value here which is rt new so rt new object dot the value of the token comes from the value property and the first parameter which is the user comes from this user object here so now the next thing that we want to do is send it to the client send this response back to the client so let's do that so we will send a response ok and we will send a new array called as auth token which will hold the response for creating the JWT token and the refresh token now if there is an error all we want to do is return a unauthorized result as we do all the time so save this and this should be it for the refresh token method so we have created all the required methods that are needed for us to generate jwt and refresh token now the next video tutorial what we want to do is test all these methods using an application called as postman if you're not familiar with postman then postman is an api testing tool which can be downloaded for for free just go to google and type postman api testing and you will see the postman application for mac and windows available download the required version depending on your os and then we will use it in the next video tutorial to test our api also if you have any questions use the comment section the code for this video tutorial and the entire project will be available in the devops repos the link will be provided in the video description please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy thank you